it is death, but to be spiritually mindful. Or if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So today I'm going to leave you with this thought. Death to the flesh. Let us pray. Father, I come before you as your humble servant. Oh, Lord, just touch me. (laughs) Oh, Lord Jesus, please. I need your grace and your spirit. Oh, Lord, help me. Thank you, Father. It's like the law of gravity. So if I had a ball and I threw the ball, what's going to happen to the ball? It's going to fall. Because the weight of the ball and the air it displaces, it's heavier. So if I had a bird and I took the bird and I threw the bird, what's going to happen to the bird? Actually, and physically. Look at verse 7. The word enmity means the state of feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something meaning a deep-seated dislike or ill will. The word enemy comes from an Anglo-French word meaning enemy. So the flesh is the enemy of who? God. It is dislikes for God and all things related. I can tell you when the Lord came to me in my truck, once been known to me, man, that was praying, sticking little rags up under my seat. I didn't find that out until years later. Seven and eight. Oh, go. I know I didn't hear that. You need to go to church. Ah, Lord, I can't go to church. I got obligations on Sunday. I was teaching school weeks go by. I finally said, Lord, I can't go to church. Not too much work to do. Go to work. All the work is dried up. No overtime. 40 hours and that was it. They used to tell us eight in the gate. So eight hours and then you hit the gate and go home. And I'm like, man, that's awful weird. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that the Lord's doing all this to orchestrate me to go to church? Church on Wednesday. So as crazy as that sounds, but the the flesh does not want any. Here I am. Dirt eventually would stain the belt yellow from the dirt that was on the ground. Then the season would change and the grass would grow up and it would stain the belt green. So ground was dark. The problem is, is that the push button society and the Western culture said, nah, we want to be, we want to be awesome when we get the black belt. And that's technically not how it's supposed to work. So the flesh don't want to, it wants to, it's lazy. The spiritual life is not a destination, it's a journey. We must stay on the path and not take stuff. I got my bags, my hands are full. When I get to the room, the latch is the safety latch. Um, I don't want to call it. Uh, the safety lock to keep anybody from breaking in is pulled too, like they were cleaning it and they left it. And I'm like, well, that's awful bizarre. So my hands are full. It was kind of, I was like, well, cool. So I kicked the door open, put all my stuff down. I checked it to make sure there ain't nobody in there. So I shut the door. I was just kind of, I wasn't really pondering. I didn't really think much about it. I was talking to Amanda. And I'm like, something was off about today. It was just, just that night, just the whole encounter with the room. So I started looking up what I thought would have been scripture. I'm like, well, let me look up. 4 and 12. And I'm like, eh, it doesn't really stand out to me. So that was, a, that, was a, that was a Monday night. So Tuesday I came home. Wednesday me and Amanda woke up. We're kind of laying in the bed talking. And I was telling her about it. And I said, I don't know. It just kind of stood out to me. And she's like, it's not 12. It's not 4 and 12. It's Revelations 4, 1 and 2. And I was like, well. Well, I'll spit if it talks about opening a door, and sure enough, that's exactly what it says. It'll open some doors. I'm like, well, isn't that, isn't that crazy? I love how the way God works, isn't it? So the flesh is lazy. 
we have to be obedient. We have to do what God's instructed. And was he instructed? Death to the flesh. It has to be killed. In Romans 8 and 5, Paul describes two kinds of people. Those who live after the flesh and those who live after the spirit. Those who live after the flesh live to please the flesh with a corrupt nature and its desires. Thoughts and emotions, physical gratification, sexual immortality, hatred, self-ambition, drug addiction. You can put it whatever you want there in that, in that category. And it's not always big sin. It's little sin. They're going to cater to the body. The flesh is a rebel against God. It can also be small things as well. Like not be technically sin, but the Lord's told you to get rid of something or mend some fences or to do something. It's disobedience. That's sin. You're not a... You're not, a, you're not obeying what he's talking to you to do. It's like, uh, it's like being on a job. If your boss tells you, hey, you got to do this, I'm not doing that. You might get fired. You know? <laughs> Amen. It's just the way it is. The Lord works the same way. To a degree, you might find yourself that you won't go any further. All right, well, this is what I've called you to do, but, hey, you know what? You want to get rid of this? You don't want to lay it down. We're not going anywhere. Lord, I don't understand. Why haven't I heard from you? Because you didn't do what I asked you to do. The flesh has to die. Look, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. There's 40 years of junk in here. 40 years. I've put into this mind things that I've done, things that I've seen. I got to get rid of it just as well as you do. The flesh has to die, so we got to declare death to the flesh. What does please God is the other kind of person, the one who lives after the Spirit, that operates only in the Spirit, walks in the Spirit, talks in the Spirit, who is fully resurrected in the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Father is looking for his Son, that is Christ, who is the expression of Oops, the expressed image of God. He has come to our human weakness in order to change us into his divine likeness so that his power and his might might be manifested in us. So that the world will see him through us, we must be burning and shining lights to reflect such a holy Jesus. How do we do this? Looking back at Romans 8 and 13, the apostle tells us, but if ye through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. What does mortify mean? To humiliate or to shame as by injury to one's pride or self-respect by abstinence, discipline, or self-inflicted suffering. Fasting. We got to read God's word. Listen to godly preaching and teaching. Be obedient to the spirit of God's voice. Full sanctification and being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because you will have the power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Because the baptism of the spirit has come for nothing less to possess the whole of our lives. It sets up Jesus as king and nothing can stand in his holy presence when he is made king. We must declare death to the flesh. The Holy Ghost is going to constantly point us back to the cross. Go to the cross. Go to the cross. That's all he's going to do. He's going to lead and guide us, but he's going to point us back to the cross so we become more Christ-like. Amen? Hmm. So I'll, uh, I'll do this. So in closing... I read a story about Smith Wigglesworth, and the story was uh, he was he was teaching a meeting, and uh, he was staying with the pastor of the church, and um, it was like a revival. So in that, after their meeting, they would have um, they would have a prayer meeting afterward. And I thought that was kind of weird. That's a novel idea. A prayer meeting after your meeting. Hmm. So anyway. Um, I don't remember, I want to say Wednesday, but I'm not exactly sure what day it was. But anyway, um, Smith had been staying with him. 
You know, he'd been praying in the house. They'd been having these meetings. So, um, but everybody would come in for the prayer meeting, and then they would all be praying. Well, as soon as Smith came in and started praying, one by one they would start leaving. So the, the old uh, pastor looked at it, and he was like, that's kind of weird. Why are they leaving? No, I'm not leaving. So he finally, in prayer, he was like, Lord, I don't want to leave. Don't make me leave. I want to see what's going on in there after everybody's gone. I want to stay. I want to stay. So he just makes up his mind. He's determined. He's going to stay. So they all come in, and they start praying. Smith walks in the back door and heads straight to the front. He's standing there praying. And as he's praying, one by one, they start leaving. And the pastor's standing up, praising, Lord, please don't make me leave. Please don't make me leave. Please don't make me leave. And as the, as the holiness of the Lord falls and it gets heavier and heavier, now the preacher's on his knees. Please, Lord, don't make me leave. I don't want to leave. Don't make me leave. And it keeps going. And it gets heavier and heavier. And now he's laying. He's prone on the floor, crying out to the Lord, please don't let me leave. I don't want to leave. I want to see what's going on. Don't make me leave. Don't make me leave. And doing it. And in last-ditch effort, he grabs a hold of a big old huge oak chair, which is very heavy. And he latches a hold of it, and he's screaming to the Lord, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, as him and the chair are pushed out the door, and the door shuts behind him. You can't stand in that hole he is. Holiness, if you're not that holy. Smith was a, was a mighty man. And if we're ever going to get to the place where the great men and women of God were, we have to be sold out. We have to declare death to the flesh. It has to die. We have to be sold out, no matter what. But stand with me, we'll pray out. I think that only lasted 15 minutes, but that was probably longer than the last one. Then we'll turn it over to Brother Jamie. Lord, I'll deliver what you wanted to be to deliver tonight, Lord. I uh, was probably short and sweet. I probably read it a little fast, but I did what you called me to do. And that's, I'm just obeying you, Lord. I hope, I hope the seeds that I threw out there will find good ground, Lord. And that it'll take root. In your holy name. flesh must die, man. What a challenge to us. Appreciate Brother Paul. He said his message, 15 minutes. My second message was probably five. So I'm thankful for the Lord, the way he lays things upon our heart. If Brother Paul is anything like me, he probably preached it all the way to Orlando and back. So this is going to be 45 minutes. But it was a powerful message, a powerful thought that we need to take hold of. There's no room to let the flesh have control in our lives. And there's only one place that the flesh dies. It has to be placed by us upon the altar. God's not going to kill the flesh for you. Pastor can't kill the flesh for you. You have to make that decision that you're going to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Place it upon that altar and say, God, I'm yours. That's what men like Smith Wigglesworth did. That's what great men of God that blazed the trail before us has done. And that's the only way that we're going to make it. So we have to be willing to die out in an altar first of repentance. We repent of our sins and then we start, as Brother Paul said, that's not the end. So many pray that they, they think the, the peak of it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But once you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that is just the beginning. Great things God has in store for us if we're willing to go all the way with Him. It, it's a changed life, but it has to become a lifestyle. And the only way that it can become a lifestyle of the spirits, you've got to get flesh out of the way. And, and usually, if you kill something, it's dead. There's just something about this flesh that seems to... One man put it in a song this way. He said, I thought that I'd overcome, and lo and behold, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there he was again. The flesh will try to sneak back up on you, try to take back over, and try to rule and reign your thoughts and your deeds and actions. That's why... Scripture puts it this way. Paul said it this way. I die daily. And Jesus said it this way. That we must take up our cross daily. And follow Him. It's not a, a one time decision. But it's a daily walk. 
Maybe this evening you're here and there's things in this, this carnal life, this fleshly life that's tried to rule your thoughts, your decisions, what you've purposed to do for God. The flesh has stood in the way of that. And, and it's not always sin. It's circumstances of life that come our way that that nails against our flesh, that begins to hit our emotions, begins to hit our senses. And it, I read something yesterday and I posted it. It said, don't let what you see override what God said. And so no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what this flesh, this senses is telling you, this can't be good and this can't, this can't end well. Remember that later in that same chapter I shared with you at the beginning of this service that God said, I'll work everything together for the good if you're called according to my purpose. If you're willing to walk with me and let me guide your footsteps, understand that does not mean that you're not going to face hard decisions because the hard decision is to override the flesh and walk after the Spirit. So maybe that's something you need to bring to the altar tonight. But I want to open these altars this evening give you that opportunity to come and talk to the Lord about that, that need in your life to bring death to the flesh. Bring death to the carnal nature of your life. Why would I want to do that? So that God and His Spirit and His truth could rule and reign in your life. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to kill you spiritually, but God said, Wait a minute, I've come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Paul said that this life that I now live, he wrote to the Galatians in Galatians 2 and 20, I believe it is. He said, this life that I now live is no longer I, but it's Christ. It's the Spirit that lives in me and through me. The only way that happens is if there's death to the flesh. So we have to take the words of Paul in Romans 12 and 1. Only you can present your body a living sacrifice. If you're like me and, and Amy, we dedicated our children to the Lord probably the first service that they were able to be in church or as soon as we could was one of the first things we did after they were born our children have been raised on church pews Gracie and Noah both have been raised basically in the parsonage they've been pastors, kids their whole life so they've been raised in church Noah's fixing to be 18 and fixing to step out into the world. I can't make Noah's decisions for him. I made a decision for him to raise him in church, to instill within him the, the Word of God, to be a living example in front of him. But I can't make the decision to serve God for Noah. I can't make the decision to serve God for Gracie. Amy can't make that decision for them. I can't make that decision for Amy. and She can't make that decision for me. It's an individual decision. You have to determine tonight... As you approach this altar, I'm tired of living after the flesh. I'm tired of living after the flesh. If that still small voice of God is speaking to you, kind of creepy the way Paul made it sound, but maybe the creepy sound of God is speaking to you. Still small voice, however God is speaking to you, maybe He speaks to us in the way that we will hear it and understand it. Paul needed that stern voice, I don't know. But however God is speaking to you, Are you willing to listen? Maybe you hear that voice of God speaking to you tonight, saying you need to do more than just come to church. You need to be the church. Maybe God is calling you deeper. Maybe God is calling you further in this relationship. Maybe God is saying you need to go further. Are you willing to do that this evening? Only you can make that commitment. As I pray tonight, I want you to approach this altar and just talk it over with God. Maybe you're here tonight and you're lost and you need to be saved. Or maybe you're away from God. You need to come back to God. Maybe you've, uh, uh, you say, Brother Jamie, you know all of us, but you never know when somebody's backslid in their heart. People can put up a good front. Maybe you've been playing, playing the part, but you say, I've just been going through the motions and I'm tired of that. I want to sell out to God tonight. This is your opportunity. Maybe there's someone listening on Spreaker, someone that will listen to this later, says flesh must die. Death to the flesh. That's what it's got. That is exactly what's got to happen in my life. That's the only way that you're going to get anywhere with God is commit totally to the Spirit. So as I pray, will you come meet me in these altars tonight and let's let every area every area that the flesh has control over, that it will die out. Father God, help us to die out to you, that we may be born again in your spirit, in your will, in your way. Oh God, help us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Help us to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us, that we may run this race with patience, that we may be everything that you'd have us to be, and do everything that you called us to do. Help us to make a decision for you tonight. 
like never before. We ask it in Jesus' name as we gather around these altars tonight. Have your way in us.